Hey, I hope you are doing well today. Um, I am going to be showing you chunky stitch binding. Okay, so this is a free tutorial that has been on my website for many years, but I, I wanted to update it. So what the demo you're going to see today is actually an excerpt from one of my classes over at Quilt Class. So if you needed something like a little bit more fuller than what I'm going to show you today, there's classes for that over on Quilt Class that kind of really break binding down, go into a whole lot more detail. Um, this is specifically how to finish with that chunky hand stitch. Let's talk about what that is. So chunky hand stitch is a method of hand binding, but instead of that hidden thread and hidden stitch, this stitch is meant to show. So it's a running stitch, same as hand quilting, but you're using a lot thicker thread and it's ready to pop. This is one of the prettiest touches I've I think I've ever put on a quilt. It is absolutely lovely. It is so extra. <laughs> it takes a long time, uh, but it's to me it's worth it. I love it. I love seeing it when it's washed. I love seeing it before it's washed. I just and I love doing it. So lots of reasons to love it. One of the reasons not to love it is it's exhausting on the old hand. But I can usually get a quilt, like a throw size quilt done in three different evenings working for maybe two to three hours per per evening and I'll have it done within like three of them so it's not you know I'm, you're not gonna be sitting there a month <laughs> none of that all right so before we get into the demo I just want to talk about a few bits really quickly let's talk about width of binding strips so most of my patterns will tell you that you need two and a half inch width strips but I never use two and a half I would encourage you to use two and a half if you are a brand new quilter it, they're just it's just easier to use it but most of the time I bounce around between two inch and two and a quarter. If I'm machine, if I'm finishing my binding by machine, I only use two inch width. If I'm finishing by hand, I'll use two and a quarter every time. Okay, and then here's another thing that I don't go into at all on the demo, but I wanna make very, very clear. When you're sewing your binding on, you do it by machine. You make the binding, you sew it to your quilt. When you finish the binding, that's when you either finish by machine again or you finish by hand. I just want to make sure that we are on the same page with the terms. There's two steps to binding, sewing it on, finishing it. Uh, when I'm putting binding on a quilt, I sew my binding onto my quilt top and I finish it on the back. Uh, I like the look better. That again is a preference thing. A lot of quilters will do the very opposite. They'll sew it onto the back and they'll finish it on the front. There are, there are many reasons why you might choose to do one way or the other, but I'm gonna just talk about my reasons. The reason that I like to sew it on the front and finish on the back is because I think it looks better, but more importantly, uh, if, you've got star, if you've got points like half square triangles lining the edge of your quilt or star points lining the edge of your quilt, if you finish it on the front, you are going to lose those points. So for that reason, on a quilt, I will exclusively finish on the back. Uh, in the demo today, I'm actually doing the opposite. And the reason I'm doing the opposite is because I'm making a runner where there's no triangles or points along the edges. And this runner is gonna sit on a table and you know it's gonna be a little showpiece and you're gonna look at it, right? And, I, and on this particular project, I wanted to be able to see those hand stitches or else there would be no reason to do it because on a runner, you never see the underside. So on this particular project I'm showing you, you're seeing me sew the binding onto the back, but then finish it on the front. So just wanted to put that out there. Let's get to the demo. Let's go over supplies before I actually get into it. All right, so I like to use these binder clips um, to keep my binding in place as I sew. And I've got them on this little, um, this bracelet here. And if I was doing, if I was going to do my binding at a tabletop, I wouldn't use this. But since I'm probably gonna do it um, on the sofa while I binge watch Netflix, having it on my wrist like this is extremely helpful. Uh, they don't dump out or spill or, you know, get lost. So I find this thing really helpful. And um, this is from Clover and we have um, the clips and the clip holder um, at Meander and Make. Um, you need a thimble. This is 
my favorite thimble, the rubber, uh, it, the rubber part of it just kind of clings to your finger. So if you've ever used one of those older ones that fall off, this one doesn't fall off. It also has this metal tip, which is really good for pushing your needle through your layers of fabric um, without, you know, harming your hands. You need a pair of snips. I like these, I like, or I really like any uh, snips with curved tips, but Havel sent me these and they're just, I really, really love them. I also don't have to put my hand in there. So having it made this way, I find is really, really helpful because, you know, your hand gets tired after you've been sewing with it for a long time. So not having to do that extra step of getting my fingers through there, I really like. And we're gonna use DMC number eight thread. I use DMC, I like that they come in all these cute little balls, but um, there's a lot of number eight threads. So if you wanna go with a different brand, just find a number eight. And the reason we wanna use number eight is because it, it pops, it shows up. It's not like those old fashioned, um, which is also very, very pretty, um, hand stitches. This thing is gonna be shown. And it's a really thick thread. And uh, because it's so thick, you need a sashiko needle. So a sashiko needle looks like this, has a really large eye. It's easy to get the needle through this eye. Also, it's a pretty thick needle. It's really strong. And we're going through, you know, two layers of the binding and the layer of the quilt. So having a strong needle um, is extremely helpful. So to get started, you just start the same way. I always start in the middle of the quilt. And now I'm just going to, well, let me get this on. <laughs> get my handy wrist binder clip keeper. Um, I'm just going to start folding this over and putting these clips just the way I've already shown you. So let me get a few of these done real fast before I move on. And I usually like to bind uh, on the sofa when I'm watching TV. <laughs> it's a great way to sit and watch a TV and not have to feel guilty about doing it because you're actually working. Um, so anyway, so that's where I like to bind mostly at, but you can also take, especially a small project like this, you could take it on road trips or whatever. Quilts tend to be a little bit big to sit in the car and bind them, but these little ones will work out really great. Next step would be to cut a piece of thread. And I like, uh, maybe a little bit more than my arm's length. And let me cut that frayed air at the end off. Put my, put, put my uh, thimble on. So I'm just going to tie a little knot and there's nothing special about this knot. It's just a basic knot. So I didn't do anything special. Looks like that. I usually don't pull it really tight. I just kind of leave it a little bit. I'll just leave it a little bit chunky like that. Um, and then I just want to put the thread on my needle. So just like that, pull it through. It looks about like this. Okay, so I usually leave that first binding clip and don't touch it, just leave it alone. And we're gonna come in at this middle between these two binding clips. And you wanna take uh, your needle and you're gonna go into the quilt top. It doesn't matter where, maybe, you know, a a quarter inch to an inch away from the binding. So I'm gonna go in like this. I like to try to get my needle beneath the batting, but I don't, you know, work really hard at doing it. If I do it, great. If I don't, it's okay, but it's what I wanna do. So I go grab a little bit of the batting and then I pop my needle out right where I want the line of stitches to be on my binding. All right, so that's about where I like my stitches just a smidgen above the fold. So I'm gonna pull it out and the knot is gonna catch on the quilt. And you're just gonna, I like to hold this thread right here with one finger and give this just a little pull and it, you'll hear it pop the knot into the quilt. Pull it a little bit more and then cut it off right there, flush with the quilt top and then when you pull it just a little bit, it should disappear. And you can do this little scratchy number here and make everything about it disappear just like that. So now your knot is hidden and you have a uh, thread ready to go. So I would take this, move it down just a little bit, and then I start my stitches. And this is just a basic running stitch. 
and I'm not and my stitches I would say are somewhere around an eighth an inch to a quarter inch I wouldn't make them a quarter inch but um, closer to an eighth so I don't know the exact measurement and it's really preference by the way so there's a stitch you want your stitches and the space between your stitches to be equal but you don't have to have it like that that's just the goal all right so we keep going and when I put my needle into the quilt I'm trying to get batting I do not want it to pop out on the other side so if I think I have popped it out on the other side I always check and if I did I pull it out but here's where we keep going so another stitch remember I'm going through the binding through the top layer of the quilt and I'm hoping I grab a little batting too so like that I push it through like this and then pull it out all right and there is some stitches and then I keep going and I can also go ahead and take that off too make it easier for me to maneuver push and then every now and then I just check and make sure because I don't want my stitches popping out over here so they're just going through the two layers of your binding your quilt top layer and picking up some batting hopefully get to a, a one of these binder clips you just take it off and then keep going now obviously I want all of my stitches to be straight I want consistency but I am a human being and consistency every time is not possible so be forgiving with yourself um, you know nobody's gonna be noticing oh her binding strips are really crooked so don't 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 have that as one of your worries we're all making crooked stitches And just keep going and this is just a running stitch I always get asked asked how uh, secure this is and I've had it I bought like I said all the quilts or most of the quilts I have in my house this is the way I want them bound and I wash those regularly and I've not had these burst open if they did burst open I would just do it again or it do at least the spot that you know had the problem but um, I haven't had that issue they they've all been fine um, this is going to obviously not be as strong as machine binding because nothing is ever going to be as strong as machine binding. But it looks so pretty. I just love it. So you see my very imperfect stitches and I think it's the prettiest thing ever. So uh, just keep going and if you're feeling clumsy um, just keep going and you will stop feeling clumsy. They'll start just feeling great. I would avoid having longer stitches because uh, I don't know how often you've slept under quilts that have long stitches. Your little toes and fingers and stuff get caught on them and then you could actually pull the thread out. So you don't want super long stitches. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this and I'm gonna show you what the corner looks like and how to get that set up properly. All right, so I'm at two clips. Um, so I'm just gonna stop, pause, and then I'm going to start uh, putting these binding clips back on and I'm really close to a corner. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. Oh, that binding clip is broke, I think. All right, so again, I, I put my last clip about a half an inch to an inch away from that corner. Go ahead and fold that down and tuck that thread in. And then this part folds over. And I want them to meet up. So just like that. And then I'll put a binder clip right there. So it'll look just like that. I'm gonna keep on with these binding clips.
Okay, um, I'm actually gonna stop right here. Normally I like to get it a little bit further along, but I'm approaching that corner. I don't wanna run out of thread before I get around that corner, so I'm gonna stop right here. Let me just move this down a little bit. And what I wanna do is I wanna make a knot, and I want my knot to be right here at the very bottom where that thread is coming out of my binding. So I take my finger like this, and then I double finger, put the needle through the loop, and then just by holding uh, my finger right here, the knot naturally goes to the very bottom of that thread right where I want it. So pull and then just keep doing that with your finger. All right, so you'll have this knot right here. I wanna go in for one final stitch, right? So right there. And I'm going to put my needle, make it come out you know, a, 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 a half inch to an inch away from the binding fold. I'm gonna make sure it's not coming out of my back of my quilt. And then pull it, and you see that knot catching right there on the, the fabric, and I'm just going to, let me get rid of that, just going to give it a little pull till it pops in place, and then I'll cut the thread. Scratch. All right. And that makes, you know, it just finishes it off nice and perfect. All right, so I'm out of thread and I need more. So I just go ahead and start this back up again. Same steps that we did um, in the beginning, but when we first started and we actually go back into the quilt the same way we started. So every time you run out of thread, this is how you redo. All right, so I'm gonna show you the, I'm gonna show you go into, into the quilt one more time. We go in about an inch, inch and a half away, or I'm sorry, half an inch to an inch away and get that needle right where we want it. Pull, it'll catch, and you're gonna pull that knot. Now, sometimes I've pulled so tight that the knot just came out of everything. And if that's what I've done, I read, I just redo the whole thing over. All right, scratch to get that to go away. And we just start right back up. And I want to show you, I'm going to keep going till I get to this corner. And I want to show you uh, what it looks like um, at the corner. All right, every corner is not going to be the same because your needle is going to come at different uh, it's going to come up at different places, and it's just the, uh, the, the nature of how it is. Um, so I don't always have the needle in the perfect spot to go around this corner. In an ideal world, I have a stitch going right across there. So um, I'll do what I need to do to make sure that stitch happens, and even if that means making a really short stitch. So I'm just going to move this binding clip about like that. And I'm going to try to keep my finger here so I can keep that perfect mitered edge going on. And I'm gonna dip my needle into the here and make it, try to make it come up right here at this, uh, uh, what is this, a 45 degree fold? I'm gonna try to make it come right there. So I'm taking a shorter stitch than I would prefer to take. But sometimes it works out perfectly where you don't have to do these little extra things. And sometimes you have to work for it. All right, so I'm just gonna go in a little bit and then come right back up, right at that fold so that I can have a stitch that goes across it. And my stitch going across it is going to look, I'm on one side of the fold and then I'm gonna get on the other side of the fold and I'm gonna get my stitches back where they actually should be and the right length that they should be. So just like that, go ahead and pop that off. And all right, so that's how I want it to look. And I want it to look, I want that stitch going over both those sides of binding every time I do it. Again, sometimes it's not in the most, your stitches aren't in the most perfect place to get it to look like that. So I have to, you know, I have to do what I need to do to get it there. All right, so um, I'm gonna continue hand stitching uh, this runner um, the same way I've been doing. I'm gonna do it on my own time and show it to you when it's done because I've shown you everything now. I've shown you how to get around the corners, uh, what happens when you run out of thread, uh, how to get back into a quilt, how to get out of the quilt. So it's the same all the way around with those few steps. And I'm actually gonna do this while I watch a little TV. Um, so I will show it to you when I got it all done. Okay, I am all done. 
Um, and then that detail to me is just so pretty. I just really, really love it. Uh, and it adds such a nice touch to the runner. And, you know, this is going to sit on a table. It's really small, so there wasn't no um, reason for me not to take some extra time for it if I had the time to take. Um, so that will do it for this okay. run. I hope you enjoyed that demo, and I hope you will give Chunky Stitch Binding a try. If you have any thoughts, tips, or just questions, put those in the comment section below. Um, all of those supplies that I mentioned in this video, I'm also linking below. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.